Hi everyone and welcome to the Hingham Public Library's very first virtual baking class. I have a disclaimer that I need to read first so I'm going to get that out of the way. This meeting or program is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access to library programs and services. You are hereby advised that no portion of this meeting may be recorded without the permission of the Hingham Public Library. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Debbie and I have been baking for as long as I can remember. I was baking before I even was out of elementary school. I have loved making desserts and all kinds of treats forever. And what I love second best to making them is helping other people learn how to make them and sharing recipes and sharing tips and tricks. And I just love it when I have friends that call and ask for a recipe or wanna know how to do something. So I am super excited to share all this knowledge with all of you. This week, we are gonna make something super delicious. They are called S'mores Magic Bars. Now, the very first thing you wanna do if you haven't done it already is wash your hands. And I did it right before I started making the video, so I am all set. Okay, so the first thing after getting your hands washed you wanna do is make sure you have all of your ingredients because what you don't want to happen is to get halfway through, through your recipe and realize you're missing something. So we are gonna go through everything that we need to make these bars. All right, the first thing you're gonna need is three cups of graham cracker crumbs. Now, you can either buy graham cracker crumbs already crushed like this or you can buy graham crackers whole and you're going to need probably two two of these packages of nine long graham crackers and you're either going to want to put those in the food processor or you're going to want to put them into a gallon freezer bag and just crush them you can use one of these, which is a meat mallet. You could even use your sweetened condensed milk. That's another one of our ingredients to crush the graham crackers into crumbs. Okay, so we're gonna need three cups of crumbs. We are also going to need two thirds cup of sugar, which we have right here. We are going to need one egg, which I have here too. We are going to need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We are going to need a half cup of flour. And although I've already measured the flour and the sugar, something that is a little trick with baking that's more important than with cooking is you always want to level off your sugar and your flour after you measure it. Okay, and let's see what else. We need a half teaspoon of salt, which is right here and you need about three cups of marshmallows. And the exact amount of marshmallows doesn't really matter because you're just gonna be sprinkling, sprinkling them over to cover, so it's not a crisis if you have a little less or a little more, it's fine. Um, you also want to have a cup of chocolate chips. You can use mini chips, you can use regular chips, you can use milk chocolate, semi-sweet, you can even use M&Ms. You just wanna have some kind of chocolate because you know the s'mores always have a combination of chocolate and marshmallow and graham crackers. Okay, let's see if we've gotten everything. We've got all of our ingredients except, like we said before, our can of sweetened condensed milk and we also need one and a half sticks of butter. I don't think it's super important with this recipe whether you use salted or unsalted butter, either is fine. Okay. Now that we have all of our ingredients together, you wanna to make sure to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. I've already turned my oven on, so that is ready and waiting, but you guys should get your ovens turned on. All right, the first thing we're gonna do with our pan is we are going to line it with aluminum foil. So you wanna get a big piece of foil and turn your pan upside down. This is a trick that makes it much easier to line a pan with foil. So you want to set the foil on top of your upside down pan and then conform it to the pan, all right? And then take this part off, turn your pan over, and then it's much easier just to slide this right in. After you've 
got your foil in your pan like this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna line it, well, you're gonna actually not line it. You've already lined it, but you're going to spread it with either a little bit of butter, which I have, or you can use nonstick cooking spray. Either one is fine. But what you wanna do is you wanna cover the bottom of the pan and you wanna get the sides too. This is gonna make it much easier to get the bars out of the pan after they come out of the oven. All right. Okay. Once your pan has been lined with butter or cooking spray, you can set it aside for a minute. Okay, now we're gonna get started with our mixing. The first thing we wanna do is beat the butter and the sugar together until fluffy. So let's get our butter in. You're only gonna need one bowl here. All right, and if some of your butter, so that means the fact that we're gonna be beating this butter with the sugar, the butter needs to be at room temperature. If your butter isn't at room temperature, I would just recommend with this recipe, just putting it in the microwave. Even if this butter ends up melting a little bit in the microwave, it isn't gonna hurt the recipe at all. Sometimes you aren't gonna be able to do that, but with this recipe, it's absolutely fine. Sometimes we're in a hurry and we wanna just get going on our recipe and we don't really feel like waiting for butter to get soft. This is one where you don't really have to. All right, so get your one and a half sticks of butter into your bowl and you also wanna add in your two thirds cup of sugar. So here's one third and here's the second third. All right, now you can use a spoon, it's probably easier though if you use a hand mixer. And you want to mix it until it's light and fluffy and totally combined. If your butter's soft, that's not going to take very long. Okay? Alrighty. Now we're gonna add our egg, which you're gonna crack on the side. And if you aren't good at cracking eggs yet, I would recommend you practice by cracking it into a separate bowl. And then if you accidentally get some of the shell in with the egg, you can get the shell out. But cracking eggs gets easier and easier the more you practice. So anytime, Somebody in your house is making eggs. Ask if you can practice cracking eggs. All right, so we've got our egg. And let me get a towel here. Okay, and the other thing we're gonna add right now is our teaspoon of vanilla extract. All right, we're gonna mix this up again. Now you might want to use a spatula to just go around the sides to make sure that it's all getting mixed together. Okay, so it doesn't look that different than it did before. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is add in the rest of our dry ingredients, which is our graham crackers three cups of crumbs, our half teaspoon of salt, and our half cup of flour. And we're gonna mix again. This is gonna take a little longer, just because you've got more mixing in to do. Keep it on low. 
Okay. And now what you're gonna be left with is something that kind of looks like wet sand. And that is your graham cracker crumb mixture. So you can take your spatula again and go around and just make sure that all of it is mixed together and that you're not left with something at the bottom that doesn't match what's on the top. All right, so here you go. All right, and that's what we've got. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna set aside about three quarters of a cup of this graham cracker mixture, okay? And you can again, just eyeball it. This isn't that big of a deal for it to be exact. I just take a cup measure and you can see that I filled it like three quarters of the way full. Now set that aside, cause that's gonna be crumbled on the top. The rest of it, you're gonna dump right into your greased pan. And now is the time that it's really important that you wash your hands because the easiest way to press this into the bottom of the pan is by using your fingers. All right, so I'm gonna start working on it. You wanna kind of spread it out so that it's spread evenly all around your pan because you don't wanna have like big thick hunks on one side and little thin crusts on other side. You wanna try to spread it out evenly. All right, so work on pressing it into the pan. All right, and when you're done, it will look like this. All right, and now you need to check your oven and see if it's preheated. And once it's preheated, you need to put this in the oven, just the crust for eight minutes. And I'm gonna do that now. Okay, we have just about one minute left on our timer before the crust comes out of the oven. So what you wanna get organized before it comes out is you want to have something to put it on, some sort of a pot holder or a wire rack, something that protects your counter. And you also wanna have pot holders when you're getting it out of the oven because you don't want to burn your fingers. And if you are young, you should be having your parents help you with this for sure, okay? So any minute now, this is gonna be ready to come out of the oven and we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients in. So what you should have left right now is your marshmallows, your three quarters cup of the crust that we kept out, your can of sweetened condensed milk, and your cup of chips, all right? cracker crust should now look a little bit like it's starting to brown around the edges but it's definitely not cooked all the way because we're going to be putting it back in the oven and you're going to set it down here being very careful not to touch the edges because it's hot okay now the first thing you're going to do is open your can of sweetened condensed milk And if there's any stuck to the lid, you can scrape it right back into the can. And you're probably gonna wanna use a small spatula. You're gonna pour it right over the crust, okay? I don't know if you guys can see this very well. I'll tilt it up in a minute so you can see, but you basically want to just scrape the inside so you get all of the sweetened condensed milk and you have it on top of your graham crackers, all right? Your graham cracker crust. So spread it around, being careful not to move the graham crackers because they're still kind of soft. Just gonna wanna get it all around the edges. Now I'm gonna pick this up and show you guys what it looks like, okay? So you've got your, and actually I'm realizing if you hold your you hold your pot holders, you can actually kind of spread it around just by shifting it back and forth. You don't even need to use a knife or a, or a spatula. 
So when that is evenly spread, the next thing you want to do is cover with most of the chocolate chips. Now you wanna leave a few chocolate chips aside just to decorate the top, but you wanna put most of the chocolate chips on top of the sweetened condensed milk. All right, mm, this smells good. All right, so I'm saving maybe like two tablespoons of chocolate chips. All right, and you can see, this is what it looks like, okay? And now on top of the chips, we're gonna spread our marshmallows. And I said about three cups. You can do a little less, you can do a little more. They do spread out a little bit when they're in the oven though. They're gonna puff up. So if you're not covering every single space, it is totally fine because they're gonna puff up and they're gonna expand while they're in the oven. All right, so we've got our marshmallows. Now on top of the marshmallows now, we are going to sprinkle our reserved crust, which I switched into this bowl where we had our marshmallows, and you're just gonna like lightly sprinkle it all around the whole pan, all right? Lightly sprinkle so that you're covering a little bit of the marshmallows. You definitely are still gonna be able to see your marshmallows through, which is what we want. But basically you now got a mixture that you can see your graham crackers and your marshmallows, okay? Let me try to tilt it again so you guys can see. All right, see? And the last thing is to take our last few tablespoons of chocolate chips and put them on top. Just makes it prettier. I think the original recipe called for putting it all in underneath, but I like to be able to see all the parts of the s'mores bar on the top. All right. So once you have your chips spread on top of your marshmallows and your graham cracker crumbs, it's ready to go back in the oven, which should still be at 350. And if you forgot and you turned off your oven, you just need to get it back to 350 degrees before you put this back in, okay? So we're gonna put this back in the oven. And, and now it's been about 18 minutes and we're gonna take them out of the oven and I will show them to you so you guys know what they should look like when they're finished. Okay, see if you can get a look at these. I'm gonna come over here so I get a closer view. See, what you've got is you've got browned marshmallows, but they're not burned. And you're probably gonna see some bubbling a little bit among the marshmallows. Okay, so now what you wanna do is just set it aside to cool completely because it's gonna be impossible to cut into squares until it's cooled all the way. So let's set it aside and wait for it to cool. Now, if you haven't snuck a piece already and you've waited for your bars to cool, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna very carefully grab them and take them out of the pan with the foil. And this is when the foil comes in handy. And what you're gonna wanna do next, let me get this out of the way, is you're gonna to wanna to carefully go around the edges and separate the bars from the foil. It's probably gonna stick a little bit because you're dealing with marshmallow here and it's very sticky, but to the best that you can, you wanna separate the bars from the foil so that you're gonna be able to cut it, all right? And then you just cut them into squares. We're gonna try doing four pieces here. And I'm going to 
show you close up what they look like. So, here we go. What do you think? Do they look good? That's what they look like. You can cut them big, you can cut them small. I would probably half these because they're, they're kind of nice to be in little bite size portions because they're rich, but they're very delicious and they will totally remind you of eating a s'more by the campfire. Oh my God, they're really yummy. I hope you like them too. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time we do baking video number two. Bye.